Hello and welcome to SchoolofFlash.com. My name is Craig Campbell and in today's tutorial we're going to talk about creating a better preloader. Now in the past we've always put our preloader in frame one of our FLA file that contains our entire website. Maybe we just have a slideshow or something like that. Uh, but when we put our preloader in the same file as our content, it kind of makes things a little bit bulky and sometimes it takes a while for the preloader itself to show up. And there are several things we have to do. We have to shift over our action script classes so that they're not actually exported until frame two. We also have to, if we have any uh, components in our file, we have to do certain things, play around with settings for those components so that they don't start loading something in frame one. And sometimes when we do that, the, com the components themselves break and stop working. And so we have to do more finagling in order to get everything working properly. Well, there's a much simpler uh, much more hassle-free way to put a preloader together, and that's to simply put it in an external file. So what we're going to do is, uh, you'll notice I've got two FLA files open here. We have one file that we're going to load. Now, in order to preload something, we have to have some kind of bulky content to load. So I've just created an FLA file here called berries.fla, and it just has a big bulky 2 meg image in it. And I'm going to go ahead and hit Command-Enter, to uh, export that Swift movie and test that Swift movie. Uh, and when you do it that way, it will publish the Swift file in the same folder as your FLA file. Now in the same folder as our, as our FLA file, I've also saved this preloader.fla file. So these are both in the same folder. And in our preloader.fla file, all I've got is this simple preloader that I've created. And it's just a rectangle inside a movie clip. Now if we double click to go into this movie clip, we have two different layers within the movie clip. The bottom layer has another movie clip in it, and the top layer is simply the border for our preloader, this black border. And I keep that border on a separate layer so that we can treat it separately from the fill, because the fill, this gray rectangle, is going to be what's expanding out as it's loading the external file. So if we click on that uh, movie clip, we can see it has an instance name of bar underscore MC. So the bar underscore MC movie clip is the movie clip that's actually going to be expanding outwards as it loads the external file. And if we go back to scene one, we can see that that bar underscore MC movie clip is contained within our preloader movie clip, which is called preloader underscore MC. So we need to use those instance names whenever we start typing in our action script. So I'm gonna lock the preloader layer, and then underneath the preloader layer, you see I have a layer called loader, and I'm gonna pull a loader component onto the stage now. So I'm gonna go to window, We'll open up our components panel, and in the UI, or the user interface section of our components, you'll see we have one near the bottom of the list called UI Loader. So we'll drag that onto the stage. Then we'll close our components, and I'm going to put this loader in the upper left-hand corner, and it's snapped into place there. If it doesn't snap into place, you can just type in your own XY coordinate of 0, 0. And then I want to change the width and height of that loader so that it matches the width and height of the stage. So we'll click in the width, We'll type in 550, and the height we'll type 400. So now it's the same size as the stage, so now we'll just click on that loader component and give it an instance name of my loader. Notice I used a capital L for loader, we need to do that in our action script as well. Now by default, when you create a loader component and load some content into it, it's going to resize that content if the content is bigger than the component itself, so it will shrink that content down. If we don't want that to happen, we can select the component, come over here to our properties, click on this little icon that has the three blocks on top of each other, and that will open the component inspector panel. And there's an option for scale content, we'll just change that from true, oops, scale content, there we go, we'll change that from true to false, so that it will stay at its original size. Okay, then we'll close the component inspector, we've given it an instance name so we can lock that layer, then we'll click on layer one for our actions layer, option F9 to open up our actions, or just F9 if you're using a PC. So now I want to test to make sure that we can load in this external file. So the way we do that is we type in my loader, which is the name of our loader component, dot, and then there's a method called load. And inside the parentheses for load, we need to put a new URL request object. So we type new URL with all capital letters, request with a capital R, and then inside the parentheses for that, we'll type in our URL of the object that we're going to load. And I'm gonna put that inside quotation marks, and it's called berries. Dot Swift. It's just the name of our external Swift file that we're going to preload. And then we'll close our parentheses for the URL request object and close the parentheses for our load method. So you should have two closing parentheses there and then a semicolon to end your statement. So now we'll hit Command Enter to test our movie. 
and sure enough it loads all right so that's working uh, good so far so now let's create an event listener that's going to make sure that our preloader disappears whenever the loading is complete that's the easy one uh, so we'll go back into our action script we'll nudge our load method down a couple lines and then we'll point to our loader again and add an event listener to it so my loader dot add event with a capital E listener with a capital L we're listening for event with a capital E dot complete complete is all capital letters comma space and then we'll create a function called on complete close your parentheses semicolon to end your statement so we'll create our on complete function uh, we need the event variable inside parentheses and then colon void opening and closing curly brackets for your on complete function and when it's complete we just want to move our preloader off the stage so our preloader is called preloader underscore MC accidentally hit caps lock there and we just want to move it off the stage. So we'll set the X coordinate to negative 1000 and that will just get it out of the way for us. Uh, so command enter to test again and hopefully our preloader will be gone and it is. Very good. Okay, we'll close our, our preview there. And now we need another event listener for uh, keeping track of the progress of the load because it's not going to load immediately when our users are watching it online. So we're going to keep track of the progress using another event listener so my loader dot add event with a capital E listener with a capital L this time we're listening for a progress event so progress with a capital P event with a capital E dot and then progress with all capital letters comma space and then we'll create another function called on progress okay now we'll create that function on progress we need our event variable here so E colon progress event colon void opening and closing curly brackets now with the progress event we have access to two different numbers here that are going to help us out because we need to calculate the percentage that has been loaded and then use that percentage to adjust the width of our preloader bar and we have access through this progress event to the number of bytes that have currently been loaded and the total number of bytes that we need to load for our external file so the total number of bytes that are in our swift file and we can gain access to those using e which is this variable that we created here so this name needs to match that name so e dot bytes oops dot bytes loaded and in order to to get our percentage we need to divide that by e dot bytes total and that will give us the percentage of total bytes that have currently been loaded so we need to let's go ahead and assign those to a variable so we'll create a variable called pct for percent We'll type colon number with a capital N and we'll set that equal to this calculation. So that'll give us our percentage. We'll store it in this variable called percent and then we'll apply the result of that. We'll apply this value to the scale X property of our loader bar. The scale X property adjusts the width of our loader bar as a percentage of the total width. So the percentage that we calculate here will correspond with the actual percentage width of our loader bar so we'll go to the next line we'll point to preloader oops I always do that preloader underscore MC dot and then inside that we're going to adjust the width of the bar underscore MC movie clip inside the preloader so we'll type preloader underscore MC dot bar underscore MC dot and then scale X with a capital X equals the value stored in the variable called percent and that's all we need so command enter to test our movie loads now obviously it's going to load right away because it's stored on our computer but we can go to view change our download settings to adjust the uh, download uh, speed that we want to test and then once we choose that we'll go to the view menu again and click on simulate download once we simulate the download we'll see our loader bar adjusting and hopefully when it hits 100 percent we'll see the image of the berries pop up and our preloader will disappear and sure enough that's what happened everything worked just fine so I hope this has cleared up a lot of confusion regarding preloaders I hope that this has made things a lot easier for you because we're now able to avoid a lot of the complications that come with putting our preloader in the same file as the website itself so once again my name is Craig Campbell thank you so much for watching uh, and feel free to stop by School of Flash anytime and I'll see you next time